Today we're performing a wrist arthroscopy. And not only do we, can we do this in the operating room, but one of the beauties of this is that there's minimal kit needed. And so we can move this into the procedure room and do therapeutic modalities as well. But also we can use this into the clinic, for example, for diagnosis, but also procedures such as intra-articular injections. But for today's purpose, we're gonna be doing a wrist arthroscopy. So we have two portals. We have the ulnar midcarpal portal and the radial midcarpal portal. And as many of you know, this is extremely tight joint. And so with the benefit of this now is we're putting a 12 gauge needle into a small joint, which will give us unparalleled access with 120 degree field of view with minimal cartilage uh, iatrogenic injury. So now we're into the joint. You can see uh, just by releasing it, it'll hold its position within the joint. I don't need to hold the cannula in. And then we'll pop the nanoscope into the mid-carpal joint and have a view of a very tight structure. So now here you'll see we're in the mid-carpal joint, very tight joint, no cartilage injury, putting the 12 gauge needle in. And what we're looking at is the lunate, and then we have the scaphoid. So we're right over the scapholunate articulation. And this is something that you can even do in the clinic with the joint numbed up, just to get an, an immediate view of dynamic uh, scapholunate instability. And as we come around, if we just drop our hand, you can see now we have the capitate. And as we come now to the ulnar side, we'll follow the lunate, and now we'll go, and we haven't even been over there yet, we're gonna see the lunotraquetral joint. So now you can see the triquetrum in the distance, and just above it is the hamate. So now you can see the capitohamate joint uh, sitting right there. And that is a 12 gauge needle that you can even do in the clinic if needed. Today we're doing a therapeutic procedure, so we're doing this in a procedure room. Uh, but again, you'll see doing it dry gives you an unparalleled view. So now I've introduced the small joint arthroscopic shaver. Remember, this is a, a 2.0 shaver, and there's a little bit of fluid in here, but under dry arthroscopy, we can, I call this the hairdryer maneuver. We can simply just suck out the synovial fluid. If there's blood in the joint, we can do an automatic washout. And here we're doing a synovectomy in the lunotriquetral joint just to clear the joint out, and then we can assess the carpus and look for any carpal instability. So now I've introduced the nanoprobe, and now you'll see I'm really pushing between the lunate and triquetrum, and, and it's stable. So now I've introduced it onto the volus side. Remember the LT ligament, like the scapholunate, has a volar and the dorsal component, as well as the membranous. For the LT, the volar is stronger than the dorsal. So I'm really stressing it. And now I'm coming to the dorsal side, again, with the nanoscope giving us 120 degrees field of view. Now I'm stressing the dorsal side, and you can see that this is pretty stable. What I particularly like about this field of view is here's a scaphoid. So there's the lunate next to it. And so when we have a scaphoid fracture, unless it's a proximal pole, this is where we're going to see this. And so when we're doing our arthroscopic scaphoid fixations or our arthroscopic scaphoid non-unions, we're getting an unparalleled view along the length of the scaphoid. And so what we can do is simply drop our hand and now follow the distal pole of the scaphoid into the STT joint. One of the real advantages of the nanoscope is that it allows us to get into tight spaces. We saw on the ulnar mid, uh, ulnar mid carpal joint earlier, but now what I've done is I've followed the scaphoid and with traditional arthroscopy, remember it's a 2.7 millimeter, 30 degree scope. It doesn't really bend or contour. So now we've gone around the scaphoid. We don't want to cause any cartilage injury. And now we're in the STT joint. So we see the trapezoid towards us and palmally, now you can see the trapezium. And just by moving this, you can see how we're in a tiny space. I mean, this is not more than a couple of millimeters and how the nanoscope has now gone into the STT joint, giving us unparalleled view of pathology and allowing us to do therapeutic procedures, such as for an example, an STT joint debridement or even in an injection if you wanted to. So here we're going into the ST joint. You can see the nanoscope is conforming to the tight space. We're going across the scaphoid. And now what we can see is that we have above us the trapezoid and palmally you can see the trapezium. So in this patient has a degree of wear into the trapezium. And this is invaluable information when we're planning on what therapeutic procedures to do to the basilar thumb joint if clinically indicated.